We've talked about what the Germans knew about the death camps and how the secret of the death camps leaked out to the outside world. But how did the governments of the Western Allies, the British and the US government, react to these horrible discoveries? In this video, you're going to learn about the Allied reaction to the news of the death camps. Keep watching because some things may surprise you. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, I'm Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher. I make videos about history for you. If you find that interesting, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. And if you want to support me, you can do so via PayPal or via Patreon because topics like this are sometimes a little bit sensitive for the platform. Heisführer SS Hanni Himmler wanted to keep the death camps a secret. The secret leaked out sooner than he expected. The Polish government in exile and diplomats from Switzerland got information from secret agents and reported extensively about the topic. By the end of 1942, the secret of the death camps was for sure no secret any longer to the outside world. How did the governments of Great Britain and the US react to this? The first official fact that was presented was presented by the Polish government in exile in June 1942. 700,000 Polish Jews were already killed by the Nazis. Both British and American governments made it official news. British Minister of Information Brendan Bracken gave a press conference and US President Franklin D. Roosevelt sent a condemnation to show his support for a protest meeting of Jewish American organizations. Near the end of 1942, it became clear the killings were part of a systematic plan and Jewish public figures, as well as the Polish government in exile, wanted the British and US governments to explicitly condemn the killings, which happened in a declaration on the 17th of December. 1942, the joint declaration by the members of the United Nations. From all the occupied countries, Jews are being transported in conditions of appalling horror and brutality to Eastern Europe. In Poland, which has been made a principal Nazi slaughterhouse, the ghettos established by the German invader are being systematically emptied of all Jews except a few highly skilled workers required for war industries. None of those taken away are ever heard of again. The able-bodied are slowly worked to death in labor camps. The infirm are left to die of exposure and starvation or are deliberately massacred in mass executions. The number of victims of these bloody cruelties is reckoned in many hundreds of thousands of entirely innocent men, women and children. British Foreign Minister Anthony Eden read this declaration in the House of Commons, which was followed by a minute of silence. Also, the BBC broadcasted it. The declaration is seen by many as the first official Allied revolution of the existence of the death camps. But is this really the case? Well, when we take a closer look, we see that they don't speak about the death camps. The declaration stated that highly skilled workers were spared and spoke of victims in the hundreds and thousands. But in reality, by this time, already 3 million Jews were killed. The declaration can be considered as a first official step, but also the last one for a while, since in the years after that, it was barely mentioned in Allied press conferences. Crucial information came through in 1943-44 as discussed in another episode, but it barely made the headlines. Only in the fall of 1944, when the Auschwitz Protocols were released, there was attention on the extermination again. So, in 1943-44, it hardly played a role in the official news and propaganda of the Allies. Take for example the Joint Declaration of Moscow, signed in October 1943 by Allied leaders Churchill, Roosevelt and Stalin, which stated that Nazi war criminals would be prosecuted after the war. And the victims were mentioned, but there was no mentioning of the Jews. In March 1944, the persecution of Jews was mentioned by Roosevelt in a press conference, but only later in his statement. The British didn't even mention them at all. When Roosevelt later mentioned how Hitler wanted to exterminate all the Jews, he quickly added also many Christians were murdered by the Nazis. The British and US governments, they had the tendency to universalize the Nazi war crimes. And it's true that not all the victims of the Nazis 
were Jews. I mean, there were the mentally disabled, Roma Sinti, gays, Jehovah Witnesses, not to mention the million and millions of Slavs that were slaughtered by the Nazis. But what you do need to realize is that the Jews were the biggest minority that were persecuted that severely. Why didn't the US and British governments emphasize the suffering of the Jews? One important factor has to do with the action perspective. What were the Allies supposed to do about it? There were discussions and this resulted in five possible strategies. Negotiate with Germany about the emigration of Jews. Create safe havens for them. Send food aid to the ghettos and camps. Retaliatory bombing and the possible bombing of the camps itself, as well as the tracks leading to it. What you need to know is that there were heated debates about what to do. Immigration would probably lead to a wave of refugees most surrounding countries weren't waiting for. Roosevelt did foresee a scandal and early 1944 he founded the War Refugee Board. How many Jews were saved by the WRB is a topic of debate. Estimates range from the tens of thousands to 200 thousands. Its director later concluded they did too little too late. Emigration to Palestine was already a controversial topic. Also paying a ransom to the Germans would strengthen the German economy and Germans could go look for other victims to ask ransom for. The Allies imposed a blockade on mainland Europe and sending food to mainland Europe would go against that. And then there was the possible of retaliatory bombing and I'd eat Churchill favorite. But the thing was, if the Germans would stop with their atrocities, it would mean that also the bombing campaigns of the Allies had to stop. And this the Allies didn't favor either. Bombing the camps could also be an option as well as the tracks leading to these camps. The bombing of that time wasn't precise enough and also tracks could be repaired. I know there's much more to it and it's perhaps a topic for a future episode. At the end, the Allies concluded that the best possible way to save the Jews was to win the war against Germany as fast as possible. Who thinks that anti-Semitism of that time was a German concept is very much mistaken. Also among the Allies, there were many anti-Semites. Some were in governing positions. And then there was also the public. Others found the complaining of Jews just annoying. A British diplomat complained in 1944 about these wailing Jews. And if it weren't the leaders that were anti-Semitic, then it was the public that harbored such sentiments or basically the fear of the public. Many Americans at that time believed the Jews were some sort of threat to society, especially since some Jews had high positions. Sadly enough, some people who make comments underneath my videos still harbor these sentiments. It was believed, some still believe this, that Jewry was intertwined with communism, the myth of Judeo-Bolshevism. In Britain there were mostly prejudices, but in the US these were much more defined. The US government was aware that a large part of the public was against the Jews, when in the 1930s Roosevelt issued his New Deal some called it the Jew deal. Before the US got in officially involved in the Second World War, American aviator Charles Lindbergh warned the US should, should stay out of another war and shouldn't be dragged into it by manipulating Brits and Jews. And German propaganda also played into this by pointing out that Allied leaders were manipulated by the Jews to wage war against Germany. And for that reason, Allied propaganda makers believed that making propaganda about the persecution of Jews was basically the wrong theme to make propaganda about. As an unpopular minority, the Jews were no appealing victims. Explicit condemnation of their persecution, let alone active aid to Jews, would only fuel the simmering anti-Semitism among the population and play into the hands of German propaganda it was feared. The Allied generalization of the Jewish suffering was therefore a conscious choice. Besides, everybody knew the Nazis were enemies of the Jews. The British and the American people needed to be convinced that the Nazis were also the enemy 
of them because that's what the war was all about according to the western allies democracy and national sovereignty versus dictatorship and tyranny winning the war was the universalist goal par excellence standing up for a persecuted minority also quickly themed unpatriotic illiberal and self-centered and then there was skepticism atrocity stories reminded people of the first world war when the most horrible stories about german conduct in belgium and northern france were spread and i covered this in a video not too long ago it's true the germans behaved brutal especially during the summer months of 1914. most of these stories were severely exaggerated and served propaganda purposes after the first world war the u.s people felt lied to by the british press when world war ii came around the public knew that atrocity stories were part of the war and allied propaganda makers they were aware of the fact that atrocity stories would not have the same effect as during the first world war therefore they held to a so-called strategy of truth this time many of the horror stories that came from german occupied territories especially in eastern europe were true but even if that was the case allied propaganda makers thought it wouldn't have a profound effect because the people were already skeptical to illustrate this in the autumn of 1944 the u.s office of war tried to keep the Auschwitz protocols that was a detailed report of what was going on in the death camp of Auschwitz. to try to keep that from being released Allied functionaries doubted if Hitler wanted to wipe out the Jews after all. I mean, Germany had a huge labor shortage, they reasoned. So it would make much more sense to send them to labor camps instead of killing them, they argued. Many reports came from Jewish sources and anti-Semitic people. They believed that the Jews were exaggerating the death toll. And even benevolent diplomats, they couldn't believe these horror stories. Sure, many people die because of cold, hunger, exposure, execution, but gas chambers and millions of people, they couldn't believe it. In December 1944, Leon Kubowitzki, one of the founders of the World Jewish Congress who had lobbied for a rescue mission, spoke to John J. McCloy, the United States Assistant Secretary of War. McCloy asked, Tell me the truth. Do you really believe all those terrible things happened? Perhaps Kubowitzki himself thought back of his own words. He spoke in the summer of 1942 when the news of the death camps reached him. And he had said, things like this don't happen in the 20th century. Thanks to my patrons you see on screen and a special thanks to Connor, Philip Jordan, Jakob Mosland, Nick Turanova, Haley Berry, Mark Littlehill, Janusz Jozinkiewicz, Joan, Justin Tabell, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, Andrea Martic, Susanna Di Bella, John Beach, Luis Pichera, Fernando Lopez Ojeda and Mike West. If you have a dollar to spare please support me. You can do so via PayPal and via Patreon. The links are in the description. If you'd like to learn about what the Germans new about the death camps you can click right here and how did the secret of the death camps leak out well that i covered right here i want to thank you for watching leave a reply give this video a like feel free to share and until next time <music>